Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from us, lug to lug the channel where two mates talk about watches. Today, Ollie's in the hot seat to discuss one of his uh, watches in his collection. Yeah, you guys must have thought I didn't actually have any watches, seeing as we've been focusing on a lot of Ben's recently. Um, but yes, today we will take a look into one of my uh, more recent acquisitions, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and it's another microbrand watch after the Formex last week. Um, this week we'll be looking at the Astra & Banks Fortitude. Let's go. Here we go. Before we start talking about the Astra & Banks, we'll just do a very quick customary wrist check. So Ben, what are you wearing? Today I'm wearing the Formex Essence 39, which we reviewed recently. Check that video out. Um, and I am actually wearing my Astra & Banks because we're going to be talking about it today. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously you, you've chosen a micro brand yeah. uh, watch. Um, is, was there a particular reason why you chose a micro brand over perhaps a more established watch brand? Um, not re really. It wasn't like a conscious decision to say I want a micro brand. Um, it was more because this watch ticked quite a few boxes of what I was looking for okay. at that moment in time. Um, because I I just sold actually I, I just sold my I had a Rolex I sold Ooh. the Rolex it was, <laughs> it was an Oyster Perpetual uh, with a white dial and I sold that um, and then I used the money from that to buy some of the other watches that I now have in my collection yeah. um, and this was one of them yeah so Astra and Banks are a brand that perhaps not many people have heard of before yeah not least because it's a micro brand but even within micro brands it's probably not that well known. No, I, I think that's um, fair. Yeah. So how did you come about finding out about them? So I, th I think the first time I saw them was on the Hodinkee website, which is... That's, a, that's always a good yeah. sign. That's always a good sign. <laughs> which is like a very sort of basic watch guy answer that yeah, I found out about something through Hodinkee. But yeah, um, yeah. But yeah I, I did spot them on there. Um, and it was actually the Fortitude when it was when it was launched. I think they had one model prior to the Fortitude. Um, but yeah, the fourth dude I saw it featured on Hodinkee and I just really loved the design and then, yeah. uh, I think you sent me a link at one point and I, yeah, I think I replied to you saying how nice it was. Yeah. I was considering it at one point, but yeah. you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are some similarities, I have to say, yeah. between this and the, and the Oyster Perpetual that you had previously. Yeah. Was that something you think perhaps subconsciously was playing on your mind a little bit, wanting a watch that was in some ways similar yeah so I, I definitely wanted like a light dial or white dial that i yeah. could wear sort of almost every day um and to be honest like one of the main reasons i sold the rolex was just because the prices were getting so crazy on the secondary market to the point where i was almost afraid of wearing it and scratching it yeah um and then it just wasn't really an enjoyable experience anymore yeah so i yeah i made the decision to sell that and then this one like i mean you could, it's got definitely some similarities with the the way, it's, the way it's been designed. Yeah, so like the big chunky bezel, the polished bezel, um, and the yeah the kind of minimal sort of dial yeah. design as well. I think you can definitely say that that's um, uh, similar to the to the OP. Yeah, for sure. And I th and I think I didn't realise how similar they were until I, I think I sent you a photo of the two of them side by side. Yeah. And, and, and actually they, yeah, like this was definitely kind of my, to fill the, the hole that was left in the collection by, yeah. by the Oyster Perpetual. Yeah. Um, it's not to say that like this and the Rolex are like equivalent in any way, but I think in terms of like a kind of daily wear, how they look, there, there is actually a fair bit of overlap yeah. between the yeah. two of them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so obviously you've gone for a micro brand, um, for, for reasons you've just discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, if we talk about some of the dimensions. Yeah, yeah, so the dimensions, again, quite similar to the Rolex in that it's very kind of a comfortable daily wear. So it's a 38 and a half mil case. Which is um, pretty small. Which is actually pretty quite small. small, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's the smallest watch in my collection yeah. actually at the yeah. moment. Um, and then it's got a 46 lug to lug, which again is pretty short. Mm. Um, and then the one thing where it is a bit thicker is it's almost 12 mil thick. And that, that's, that's the one bit that, yeah, it's probably a bit bigger, um, kind of comparatively to the other dimensions. It's, yeah. it's got a bit yeah. of thickness to it. 
but um, like relatively short lugs as well, right? Yeah, yeah, fairly short lugs, yeah. and then it's also a twenty mil lug width, so yeah, it's uh, can handle a few straps on there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, the the dimensions are are compact for sure, um, but not to the point where it, it doesn't feel like overly kind of dainty or small on the wrist. Sure. Sure. But I think it's definitely one that can fit on, yeah, all, all wrist sizes. It's one that I think, like, most ladies could also, like, comfortably pull off people with small yeah, wrists. Yeah, I um, agree. So they come in some very attractive colours as well. They obviously chose this this colour, but I think you were at one point considering, was it like the minty yeah. kind of colour as well? Yeah. Yeah, so th this one is, is described as sand. So which is and you'll you can nice see in the gritty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is actually a bit of texture to it. It, okay. it is almost like sand, where it's kind of yeah, it's a bit kind of off white, creamy. Yeah, it's really nice. Little bit really of texture, nice. but there is also a, yeah, there was a really nice mint one, but unfortunately, I think that one sold out quite quickly, and I think it is still sold out. Um, but yeah, that Very that popular. one that one yeah. I was was really nice, yeah. and I think like a great summer watch. And obviously the, the bracelet is tapered as well, which just adds to that kind of dainty uh, kind of uh, sizing. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And it's tapers very nicely. Yeah, it's, it's quite an, like an, an aggressive taper almost. It's got like a lot of the, the sort of features that I am very drawn to in watches where it's got a bracelet that looks quite like integrated and seamless. It does, yeah. Built into yeah, the case, definitely, definitely. which I really, really liked. And, and again, like referencing back to the Rolex, I think it's similar where it has like the nice integrated end links yes. that makes it all look very seamless. Yeah. And um, um, is that sapphire crystal as well? It is a sapphire yeah. crystal. So it's it's a it's a flat sapphire crystal, so it's not domed at all, but it, the crystal does protrude slightly above the bezel, mm -hmm. um, which can cause like a tiny bit of distortion on the edges when you're looking at it. Okay. Um, but yeah, overall it's a it's a very nicely executed piece yeah. of crystal. Signed crown, that's nice. Yeah, signed crown. So it, I mean, it's it's got a fair amount of finishing on the case. It's it's got brushing around the top of the bezel, and then it's got polished um, outside of the bezel. Um, most of the case is then brushed, but it does have a, a nicely kind of polished bevel along the edges, mm. and then that runs onto the underside of the bracelet links, yeah. which are, which I think is a bit strange in a way. I'm not I'm not sure why you'd polish the underside of a link. Yeah, I'm not really sure <laughs> why, but I think uh, overall it's it has been designed, you know, by someone who who clearly is a, a watch enthusiast. I yeah. would say so. There's there's certainly elements here that are you know very impressive for yeah. the price as yeah, well. For we sure. We haven't mentioned the price, so no, we haven't mentioned should the we go price. Into that? So six hundred and fifty dollars basically is the price. Mm. Um, you in the US, uh, but obviously living in the UK, I then had to pay import taxes and things on top of that. Yeah. But I, I think it was some somewhere just shy of six hundred pounds is what I ended up okay. paying okay. All, all in by the time I'd included all that. Okay. So it's still great value. For a money. lot of watch for six hundred pounds. Yeah. 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 A lot of watch for six hundred pounds, and I, and I think it's interesting the point you made about the design and it looking like it was designed by, I guess, a watch nerd. Because the yeah. the guy who, give him some credit. <laughs> yeah, the guy who the guy who set up the company his name's Andrew, um, and yeah, he was just a watch enthusiast. Mm. Decided to set up his own company, mm. um, based in Chicago in Illinois, and they're assemb assembled yeah. in Illinois, yeah. which is okay. which is quite unique in yeah. the watch space. Yeah, there aren't absolutely. there aren't too many American brands out no. there. Yeah, there, was, no. there was a few like nice personal touches um, in that when it arrived, there was like a signed note from Andrew. Yeah, um, that's nice. that was like addressed to me. Um, came in actually quite a nice, quite nice packaging as well. We'll, we'll put some pictures up, but it came in a very nice like leather travel case, um, which to me I'd almost prefer having over like a big box because this is something I might actually use if I'm, if yeah, I'm yeah, gonna put it in my suitcase. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so yeah, and it also came with an, with a, another strap as well. Yes, the canvas strap, which yes. also looks very good. Yeah, it looks very good on this watch. Yeah, it does look good. So we, yeah, well, again, we'll, we'll put some pictures up so you can see that. Um, but it's a nice kind of green canvas strap that's leather lined, mm. and it has a signed uh, Astrum Banks buckle on there too. Okay. Are there any other uh, characteristics that you think are worth mentioning? So I mean, we haven't mentioned the movement, and that's probably the the least exciting part of this watch. So it's a it's a Miyota nine zero one five movement, which is a obviously a very reliable Japanese movement. 
Uh, it's got 42 hours of power reserve, which is, actually, good. Which is actually better than, than the, the Salita that we often mention on our channel, uh, found, in, the, found yeah. in our Orises. So yeah, the, the movement isn't, isn't anything to write home about, but it has been reliable, I haven't had any issues with it, and it's actually performing above the accuracy specs. Good. Which, yeah. which is always good. Yeah. And this has been treated with a very good quality loom as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the loom is, is Swiss Super Luminova, um, and... It really does pop. It really does pop. <laughs> it really does yeah, pop. Yeah, it's one of the best looms I've seen. Yeah, they have. Even in, like, daylight, you, it's, it's quite notable, isn't it? It doesn't have to be necessarily that dark, and, and it still pops. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it charges up so quickly, <laughs> and I think that they... It's because it has these quite big applied indices, and I think they must have just filled them with loom. Absolutely filled them, yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, it's, to be honest, probably in my entire collection, the loom on this is, yeah. is the best loom. Yeah. And it's also the cheapest watch in my collection. Yeah. So loom you, nerds, yeah. take, take note, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In terms of loom value for money, this watch is, is a great, yeah. is a great yeah. option. Yeah. Up until this point, all very positive. Yes. Yeah, in most, in most circumstances. So anything that you would say is a drawback? Yeah, so. Things you could improve on with I, this watch? The one thing, and and it again, it, it's tough to re to really be too critical at this price point. I think, um, but I do think that the date window and and the date kind of mechanism could be slightly better here because mm. it it doesn't have quick change date. I don't know what yeah, you call it. Yeah, that, 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 that works. Is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> but basically, basically, when when the hour when it when it goes past midnight, it's not like the date changes immediately. There's kind of a period of time where the date slowly changes over. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you're looking at your watch at like one a.m. or something, you'll you'll see the date is kind of halfway between yeah. the two. Yeah, it days. looks a bit strange, it doesn't just, it? So yeah. it just looks a bit like your watch is broken for yeah. a period of time. Um, <laughs> is it the eleventh or the first? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> but um, yeah, to be honest, like in day to day, I'm not checking the date very often, no. like late at night like, or early in the morning. Yeah. So most of the time, yeah. it's fine. But that, that would be a small thing. Yeah. Um, and I also think that the date window is maybe a bit far away from the dial. Um, yeah, I agree. It, it's very, it sits very deep, doesn't it? Yeah. To the point where you can almost kind of look around into the, the window <laughs> yeah. and just have a gander yeah. um, at what's inside. Yeah. Um, it's set a bit too far back. A little bit, um, I would say, yeah. So... Yeah, that that's probably the the biggest drawback with the with the kind of front of the watch. But um, I would also say that like the date window is color matched, so that's, that's good. That's nice. Yeah, it's also framed quite nicely. Like it has kind of slightly beveled edges around the the framing, so it's not like it's a badly executed date window. I just think that there's a couple of small things that could be better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess to fix some of them, you're putting a different movement in here, and then the price is completely price different. Price goes up. Yeah. Yeah. I think all things considered for a £600 watch, it's very nicely finished. Yeah. It looks lovely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there has been definitely some thought going into to, to de sort of designing it. The only other negative I would say um, is the case back itself protrudes quite far from the watch. Yeah, it's very kind of, yeah, yeah. it's thick, isn't it? It's, it's got quite, I mean, maybe you can yeah. see that there, but it's, it protrudes quite a bit from the back. And that there is a reason for this because it has a, a kind of soft iron casing, 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 casing. casing. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is actually quite highly anti-magnetic, which is of, of course great. Yeah, um, yeah. In terms of reliability, accuracy. If you ever need an MRI, you're safe to wear <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, but then it does mean that there's a bit of like a sort of gap between your wrist and the bracelet because it it's kind yeah. of sits a bit high yeah. on the wrist. But um, you holding it like that, it actually you can see how immediate the, the kind of drop down from the lugs to the bracelet is. Yeah. Which obviously will have a positive impact on how the watch wears. Yeah. To be honest, like it doesn't really bother me much in yeah. day to day, um, but I think a couple of other reviews have also highlighted the thickness on the back, but mm. doesn't seem to affect me too much. But maybe if your wrist is a certain shape, it, it could impact it yeah. more, more or less. Just uh, talking about the bracelet, is it a pin system or is it screw in links? So it's screw in links, which is ah, okay. which again is yeah, is, that's decent, which that's is really, really nice to have. And you also have like the 
the shape um, of each individual link I think is quite interesting and actually quite unique here. Um, so you have like very small links which make the bracelet very comfortable because it articulates very nicely yeah, and shapes the yeah. wrist. And then you've also got the yeah the screw and links as as you've mentioned. And then one other thing that I think a lot of a lot of people out there who love changing straps uh, will appreciate is the fact that it has drilled lugs. So it's actually very easy to take the bracelet on and yeah. off. Yeah. So I actually experienced this firsthand <laughs> about well what thirty minutes ago before we started filming. I was just switching off the the bracelet for the canvas strap, and I probably got it down in what two or three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah it's pretty straightforward. Um, which is always a plus when you want to swap out the bracelet. Yeah, and it prevents you scratching the back of the case because you can you can just use the kind of pin tool, stick, yeah. it, stick it in there, stick and it in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no luck <lump> scratches. <laughs> and it, yeah, and it's quite easy. So overall, yeah, what would you what would you score this out of ten? I mean, if if you're taking into account the, the price, value. I, let's go value for money out of ten. Value for money, I think it, it's very hard to beat in terms of the the style of it as well because I, I think so many watches at this price point and especially among micro brands are kind of vintage divers yes yeah and to get something that is it's a bit more of a kind of field watch or almost sporty sports yeah, watch I would so say but there's certainly like a sporty feel to it I yeah. would say um, and you don't get like there's not many watches that look like this and can kind of pull that off in this price point. Yeah. So for, for me, the value for money is is like yeah, a, a nine or a ten yeah. out of ten. Yeah. I yeah. think it's I think I it's think tough I'd to be. Agree. Oh, yeah. 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 I think it's a a superb value uh, for money watch. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there's probably just a yeah a couple of very small things that could be tweaked, um, but as an overall package, like. I think it's really, really tough to beat, and I I find myself reaching for this watch very often, mm. above like watches I have that are more expensive, um, that are more kind of highly regarded in the community. Yes, I'd say, yeah, yeah. But for but in terms of like daily enjoyment for wearing it, this one is probably one of my top watches. Yeah, very so good. So I would uh, yeah yeah I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. Very good. So it's a thumbs up for Astro and Banks. A full thumbs up for Astro and Banks. There you go. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's been another episode of Lug to Lug, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Um, before we finish, we'd just like to shout out to our number one subscriber, Lawrence Poon, who is consistently commenting on our videos and showing a willingness to get involved with the Lug to Lug channel. So thank you, Lawrence Poon. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lawrence. And uh, of course, thank you to all of the other people that are also commenting. Um, we are sort of seeing the, the channel gain some momentum which is exciting yeah so if um, anyone wants to sponsor us uh email ben yes <laughs> <please>. yeah <laughs> all right thank you guys you take care thanks bye. a lot bye <laughs>